Hi, my name is Talia, and I'm going to show you how to get started using Amazon SageMaker Ground Truth. To start, let's put some images in an S3 bucket. I've navigated to the S3 console. I'm going to create a bucket, give it a name. It's important to note which region I create the bucket in. I want to create my labeling job in the same region. I'm going to pick US West. The following screens will help you configure your bucket. Now that I've created a bucket, I'm going to go into it and put some photos that I want to use for my labeling job. Now that I've uploaded the photos, I'm going to go back to the AWS console and I'm going to navigate to the Amazon SageMaker console. In this console, I'm going to go into the ground truth section and I'm going to go into labeling workforces. Here in labeling workforces, I'm going to go to the private tab and I'm going to create a private team. I'm going to give the team a name. And I'm going to invite new workers by email. Here, I'm just going to put my email. So this will allow me to view the labeling job tasks that I create and work on them. So now I'm going to navigate back to the private worker tab and you'll see that a private workforce has been created because I didn't have one in this account already. And the private team was also created. If I click on the private team, I can see that I've been added as a worker. Now, because I added myself and invited myself via email, I received this email inviting me to the work team. And I can use this link in the email to set my username and password. So this is going to give me the ability to access this worker portal here. Now I've already reset it, but you'll see that when you try to log into this worker portal, the first time it's going to ask you to reset your password. So now you've created all of the resources you need to create a labeling job. So let's go ahead and do that now. Under the ground truth section, I'm going to select labeling jobs and then I'm going to click create labeling job. And the job overview section is where you're going to specify your labeling job name and your input data, as well as where you want to store your output data. So let's give our job a name. Um, for the input data set location, I'm going to browse S3 and let's select the bucket where we put our input images. I'm going to store my output data in the same location in this S3 bucket. And for data type, I'm going to specify image. So Ground Truth is going to go into this bucket, look for images, and use those for input data. The IAM role is the execution role used to access resources required to create your labeling job and to execute your labeling job. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new role here. Um, I can specify a specific bucket or I can choose to give this role permission to access any S3 bucket. That role will auto populate, and then I'm going to select complete data setup. So now that your input data setup is complete, if you go back to your S3 bucket, you'll see that an input manifest file was created. And if you open up that file, you'll see that each line of the file is a JSON object, which indicates a single data object to be labeled. So now let's specify our task type. So here under task category, we've selected image and we're going to create a bounding box labeling job, which is used for object detection. And then we can go to the next screen. 
So now let's identify our workers. We're going to use a private workforce and we're going to select the private work team that we created. For the task timeout, we'll leave this at an hour. This is going to determine how long workers have to work on your tasks. If you have a data object that you think will take longer to annotate, maybe it's complicated, it has multiple objects in it, or the annotations are intricate, you might want to increase your task timeout. Task expiration will determine how long a task remains available to workers. And if a worker doesn't pick up a task before the task expiration time expires, the task will be marked as failed and it will be removed from the worker portal. If you want more than one worker to label a single data object, you should specify more than one worker here under number of workers per data set object. We'll leave that at one. So now let's specify our worker instructions and the labels that we want workers to choose from. Okay, so we filled in the instructions. We have an example of a good annotation and a couple of examples of bad annotations. We've added a description for our labeling task and a few labels that workers can choose from. If you need more room, you can add additional instructions here. And to preview the UI that my workers are gonna use, I can use the preview button here. And this is going to open up a preview that is interactive. I can use all of the same tools that my workers will have access to. So I might experiment with this to get a feel for what the worker experience will be. Create a few annotations. I also want to make sure that my instructions are displaying properly. Here is where those additional instructions will show up. Additionally, I want to make sure my description is displaying properly. And finally, I can submit the annotations I created, and this is what the output data would look like if a worker created these annotations here. So once you're satisfied with your human task UI, you can go ahead and press create, and this is going to create your labeling job. So now that I've created the labeling job, here in the labeling job summary screen, I'm going to see that the labeled objects are waiting in the worker portal. So if I navigate back there and refresh, I should see the labeling task show up. This is that description that we used. And I can select start working. And here I'll see the labeling task show up. Here are the instructions. And just like we did with the worker UI preview, I can start labeling the objects. I'm not going to label them all, but you would ideally tell the worker what you want labeled. And if you want to make sure that they, for example, don't label the pedestrians on the sidewalk, you would want to specify that in your instructions. Once I'm done, I'm going to press submit and it's going to move on to the next image in this task. So I'll label a few items here. and I finished labeling all available tasks. Now, if I go back to the labeling job screen and press refresh, it might take a few minutes, but I should see that once those objects are registered as labeled, labeled objects will show two out of two. Congratulations, your labeling job is complete. I'm gonna go ahead and select on the labeling job name to see the summary screen for that job and then here I can select the output data set location to see the folders that were created and that store my output data. To learn more about the contents of each of the folders you see here, refer to the ground truth documentation on output directories on the output data page.